Okay, so thank you guys very much for coming. So today we're going to talk about the slow cooker meals. And I know the Instapot is very popular right now, but the advantages of the slow cooker are that it is easier to use. Usually it only has the low, the warm, you know, the high button, and then it's usually less expensive to buy one. So, and you can get them all different sizes like you can the Instapot, but it's kind of nice just to um, have something that's really easy to use sometimes. Instapot, not bad, but could take a tutorial. Okay, so just getting started then. So my name is Andrea Nikolai and I work with the University of Florida in the Extension in Polk County. I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences agent and I'm a registered dietitian and I just enjoy talking about food and nutrition. So I'm glad you're here. And then um, with me today, I also have Amanda Trott. She's a dietetic intern from Kaiser University that I have. And she picked out a couple of recipes that she wanted to share with you guys. So you'll hear from her later in the presentation. And um, if you haven't used, used Zoom, lately you can um, always type something in the chat box if you have something like a comment or a question so the chat box it's usually found if you hover over the top or the bottom of the screen it'll like the controls will show up and then you'll see a chat there and then i also have a short evaluation and i would love if you guys would fill it out because that'll help me improve for like in the future and then uh, make you uh, make better presentations so <laughs> i really appreciate that all right, so let's get started. So do you feel this way? Do you feel this is often true about eating healthy? You can live to be 100 if you give up all the things that you that make you want to live to be 100. Would you prefer healthy eating to be more like this? Your body is not a temple, it's an amusement park. Enjoy the ride. Imagine this though, you have just walked in the door and you're greeted by the aroma of a luscious soup simmering in your slow cooker. You slice a loaf of holy bread and toss a simple salad. Dinner is served. So while the joys of roast beef ribs and of beef, filet mignons and T-bone steaks are undeniable, the soul warming appeal of a beef stew is eternal. And that's what Julia Child said. So the benefits of using a slow cooker Here's um, some reasons maybe I can convince you that it could be fun to bring yours out if you have one or get one. A slow cooker it uses less electricity than an oven. They can be used throughout the year. And they provide a welcoming aroma of hot food during the winter. Or if um, you're in Florida, if we had the Florida winter like we did last weekend. <laughs> so in the summer, the advantages, so this would also be important in Florida where most of the time it's warm. Slow cookers don't heat up the house like an oven does. That is a quite an advantage. And they help tenderize less expensive cuts of meat. So a crock pot can really help um, save money that way by allowing you to cook like the cheaper and less tender cuts of meat that get, and then they would help them, <laughs> yeah, get more tender. So you can save the more expensive cuts like the round steak, sirloin, and other more tender um, cuts of meat for the grill or the stove top that are already tender, but this will help make them tender. So slow cookers usually allow one-step preparation and cleanup. That's a very helpful thing that you just have to wash that. And then there's a variety of foods that can be made in it. Sometimes you just think about chili or maybe the nacho dip, but you can make, um, you can cook a chicken in there. We'll talk about that today. Side dishes, main dishes, desserts, you can get it all. So learn how to cook and try new recipes and learn from your mistakes. Be fearless and above all, have fun. So sometimes you learn the best by just trying something and then you'll realize, you know, what worked best and then you can perfect it. And so there's no, you know, like, um, we'll just get you the tips or you can test things out safely. And then it's um, just whatever you can brainstorm up. So know your slow cooker. So read your slow cooker instruction manual and follow the manufacturer's directions because so most cookers, slow cookers have two or three settings. This is kind of what I was talking about with uh, very simple to use and then cooking on different settings. So there's the low setting and that's usually when you want food to cook for like six to 10 hours, say you're at work or something like that. And then the high setting when you're like, okay, we need to get this done. So food cooks in four to six hours. And um, yes, it's, uh, it is safe. Um, <laughs> it cooks food slowly at a low temperature. That's what it does the best at. And it generally cooks between 170 degrees and 280 degrees. So it's well out of the danger zone where bacteria multiplies. So if possible, just talking about the bacteria, if you can set the slow cooker on high for the first hour 
and then you turn it to low to finish cooking. And that will, um, you know, if you're leaving for work, for example, the preparation time is limited. So while food is cooking and once it's done, food will stay safe as long as the slow cooker is operating. And you can leave it on low the entire time. It's just putting it on high will help it reach the safe temperature faster. And that can be um, just extra safety, I guess. And then the first time you use a slow cooker, stay at home just to make sure that it, you know, you're familiar with it and ensure it's working properly. You don't want to end up with um, like a smoking something. <laughs> Okay, so here's just a couple things about the slow cooker safety, just so you know. Um, just wash hands before, during, and after food preparation, which would be true of anything, but it can really help, you know, just keep the bacteria away from away from <laughs> your food. So start with a clean slow cooker, utensils, and work surface. All makes sense. And then thaw the meat and poultry in the refrigerator before cooking in a slow cooker. So this is different than an Instapot. So an Instapot has the advantage of being able to cook um, frozen food. But um, if you with a slow cooker, you have to thaw the meat or poultry in the refrigerator. So you just have to plan ahead just a little bit longer. Um, and then do not try to cook the frozen meat or poultry in a slow cooker. It's like it can take because it's a slower cooking thing. It may take several hours to reach a high enough temperature to destroy the bacteria. So, you know, it's like it's like slowly heating up and foods stay in the danger zone. If they do stay in the danger zone between 40 and 140 degrees too long, the bacteria really multiply during those times. So that's like kind of why we're having a picnic. And you know, if the temperatures outside is in between there, that's why you, you know, have to like they suggest two hours or sometimes one hour if it's too warm because the bacteria likes that to multiply and it's not high enough to kill the bacteria. So cutting meat into uniform pieces also ensures thorough cooking. So when you cut it up, the idea would be just to have the uniform pieces so that the dish is all done at the same time. So if you have like big piece and then small piece, um, you know, some will get overcooked while you're waiting for the other ones to get done. And then you can stretch your in <laughs> check your instruction booklet for directions on whether you can prepare large cuts of meat or poultry safely in your whole, whole cooker and how to do it. So some of the small ones, you know, they might recommend not bigger than this, some like pound of chicken or something like that. And meats cuts too large for a specific cooker do not cook quickly enough to avoid the bacteria growth. So that's kind of like what we talked about before. So large cuts of meats and poultry, they can be cooked safely in a slow cooker. Um, and since they're available in several sizes, just that's why it's good to check your instruction booklet just for suggested sizes that they know will be able to get up safely to the right temperature. But sometimes those types of meats, they can really tenderize them. So that's an advantage for cooking the whole thing in there. And they're available in different sizes, like we said, so the instructions may vary. If you cannot find the instructions or you have no idea what happened to them, you can cut the meat into smaller chunks and that's way you'll ensure like safe cooking. And you can add a liquid such as broth, water, or barbecue sauce suggested in the recipe and keep the lid in place during cooking. So if you cut up the meats and the vegetables ahead of time, you know, so you're like the night before and you're gonna um, try try using your slow cooker that next day while you go to work or something like that or taking it to work if you cut up the meats and vegetables ahead of time store these um separately in the refrigerator because a slow cooker you know how we talked about it can take several hours just to reach that safe bacteria killing temperature constant refrigeration of these two assures that bacteria which multiply rapidly at room temperature they won't get a head start um, with them together so try to keep the chopped vegetables and chopped meats separate um, and then add them in the slow cooker when you're ready to start cooking. So because vegetables, this is something for me, I feel like the meat would cook uh, quicker than vegetables or slower than vegetables, excuse me. But I have um, put a pork chop in the oven, um, some, you know, with like some vegetables and you notice, you know, which things are taking longer. So because like those root vegetables usually cook slower than meat and poultry, you place the vegetables in the slow cooker first. And then you put the meat on top of the vegetables and then you can top with a liquid such as broth, water, or sauce. And that's how you would get a really good delicious ditch. So um, put them in first. So bottom of the crock pot, they um, would be where the things that take the longest time to cook, especially those root vegetables. So that would be the potatoes, the carrots, I guess, parsnips, onions. So just putting them at the bottom will give them time to cook. Sweet potatoes, if you do that. And 
I have to say too, it's something interesting about beans. I make beans in the slow cooker a lot, just the dry beans, because then you don't have to worry about watching them on the stove. But just one thing to note, like if you do make red kidney beans, they're the exception to just being able to dump the dry beans in there, uh, is that they have, um, they must be soaked for, and then boiled for at least 20 minutes because they have um, something in the kidney beans that is really important that you cook it to a high enough temperature to release it. And so that's, uh, kidney beans are kind of special that way. So the rest of the beans, you're good to go. Um, yes, so Anna suggested if you do make dry beans in there, which is really good, if you do soak them for 12 hours before and then rinse them, that'll help reduce some of the gas forming agents so that you have um, more comfort when you eat them. So for easy cleanup and care, you know, spray the inside of the slow cooker for nonstick spray with before you use it. If you've ever made like lasagna or something like in your slow cooker, you can kind of get that ridge around there. You would just, you know, really enjoy having that uh, spray. Slow cooker liners also ease cleanup. And as some people have asked me, you know, are those really safe, like, you know, plastic? And so I just uh, did some research in Crock-Pot. The slow cooker liners are made of this nylon resin to ensure safe cooking at any temperature when used with their crock, crock pot. And they're also BPA free. So that's nice to know and that they're specifically made for it. And they're suitable for cooking foods in slow cookers in the high, low, or keep warm settings. So it's, um, yeah, kind of nice just to know that for sure. Recommended temperatures then, this is pretty important and this will help you figure out when your meat is done so you don't have to overcook it just to make double sure. So 145 would be the fresh beef, lamb, veal, pork. So if it's steaks or roasts, that's um, the temperature if you insert a thermometer in there, um, about 145. Then fish, um, 145. And things like ground meat and meat mixtures, beef, pork, they would be the 160 and casseroles with poultry, chicken, and then poultry and chicken there also. So if you make a chicken in there, they're 165. Sometimes I have trouble remembering the numbers, but if you think about it, the birds, um, like chicken and turkey, duck, goose, they think about them like they fly high, you know, they're flying and then they're at the highest temperature too. Okay, so this is an important one to filling the slow cooker no less than one half full and no more than two full, two thirds full. So why is that important? So if you cook, um, do more than two thirds full, the food may cook too slowly to be safe. So it's like, it just has too much and it's not really able to boil. And then less than one half full, there's a good chance that your meal will burn by the end of the cooking time, just especially if the liquids cook down too much. So that would be why you wanna kind of try to keep it in, in between there. So cookers, they keep food safe though through, here's how they work, direct heat from the pot, lengthy cooking, and then the steam created within that tightly covered container. So it's like the steam is um, heating it and then that long cooking time, long and slow, which is why it can be really good for some meats and then getting the beans done without having to watch them. One tip definitely is keep the lid tightly closed during cooking process to prevent heat loss and keep food safe. So, you know, it's designed to um, cook the food for a long period of time, evenly at a low temperature. And, you know, taking out the lid for even a few seconds mean that the crock pot will lose it, the heat that it's built up over all that time. And, you know, it's, um, so except, except for nearing the end of the cooking time, when you wanna like check the thermometer, keep that lid on. I have to say, you know, like at work, sometimes I used to work at a place where we would do a lot of potlucks and people would bring their crock pots and, you know, everyone wants to see what's in the crock pot. So people would lift up the lids and, um, I, we noticed like a lot of people started taping their lids shut just because people kept peeking and that's because it could take, you know, it could, you know, you thought your thing is going to be done at lunchtime, but turns out people keep peeking and doesn't even get close to that. So really can make a difference. And then if you're not at home during the entire slow cooking process and the power goes out, then you have to throw away the food, even if it looks done, because, you know, you're not really sure when it stopped and then, um, yeah, you just want to make sure you're safe. It's not worth getting sick. And if you're at home, then you can take it, you know, um, finish cooking it immediately as soon as you can or by some other means. Or if it was completely cooked before the outage, then it should remain safe in that slow cooker for about two hours. So if you can figure out when the power went out, say, and then it's less than two hours afterwards, 
you would be okay to go. So review, which ingredient should you put first in the slow cooker? If you guys can write in the chat, I would love it. Do you think you should put the meat in first, the vegetables or the liquid? Number two, meat, vegetables, liquid. It's the vegetables, actually. If you think they actually take longer sometimes than like, especially those root vegetables. So we don't put things like broccoli or um, kind of very delicate vegetables in there too much. It's mostly root vegetables that seem to go really well in there. And they take longer to cook than the meat, especially if it's, um, if it's cut up. So vegetables is the answer on that one. Good job, you guys. Okay, and then review, which statement is true? Should you always thaw the meat or poultry before putting it in a slow cooker? Should you fill a slow cooker between one fourth and three fourths full? And then, or three, if the power goes out, the food in a slow cooker will be safe several hours if you leave the lid on. Which one do you think is true? Yes, you guys are great. Thank you, thanks for playing. <laughs> so always thaw the meat in the poultry before you put it in the slow cooker. Good job. So just, I have some ideas then, um, pot roast. Here's just a couple kind of recipe ideas and then some tips. So pot roast, it's simple and delicious. That's the thing about that. Some people love that pot liquor. It's, um, and you can refrigerate that. So that would be like, you're putting the, the, the root vegetables in, you can kind of see potatoes and carrots, maybe even you could do celery, onions, and then you put the meat on top. Um, but then you could cover it with water and you end up with this, like, you know, you end up with this broth that people love and you skim off, you can put it in the refrigerator, the fat rises to the top and then you can skim off the fat so that you don't have that going to your heart. And then you use that liquid as a base for like a beef vegetable soup along with leftover meat from maybe your meal. So that can work really well. Um, it just has a ton of flavor in it, in that. So some people love that. And then here's, um, so the low heat helps less expensive, leaner cuts of meat become more tender and shrink less. So, you know, if you cook them on high heat, you know, there might be, <laughs> um, I guess, more chewy and then more shrinkage. So thinking about just some ideas that might work in the slow cooker pretty well are the chuck roast. Um, if you can look for um, loin or um loin, sirloin, things like that, they're leaner. Plank steak is a leaner cut. There's blade, brisket, skirt steak, and then short ribs would be less leaner, <laughs> less lean. Um, and then there's pork, there's the butt, the tenderloin would be the leanest part there, spare ribs, and then the shoulder. So ground beef also, you can cook it in a slow cooker. You pour in about a fourth of a cup of water for each pound of beef. So if you want to make ground turkey or something like that in the slow cooker, you just need to add a little bit of water and then you cook it on high for two or three hours or low for four to six. And just um, recognize that if you do put it with stuff, like you can use the ground beef and chili, like a soup or a spaghetti sauce. Um, you can also, instead of the water, use like maybe one cup of salsa to give it some liquid uh, with each pound of ground beef instead of the water. And just um, the thing about the um, <laughs> ground beef, putting it in there, if you use cuts or um, ground beef that's higher in fat, the fat is going to stay in there unless you're able to drain it off. So just recognize that that might be a really good time to use a leaner, a leaner cut. And then I just wanted to say too, like the chuck tender roast and chunk, uh, chunk eye roast, they're about around 150 calories for a three ounce serving, which a three ounce serving would be like a deck of cards or the palm of your hand. So that's pretty good. Those are um, lean for your health. So they'd be good. And then I have to say too, you know, browning the meat before adding to the slow cooker, it really enhances the flavor. So sometimes you might have seen um, when you're cooking something, you sear it um, maybe on the pan and then you put it in the slow cooker. It's just that it really enhances the flavor. Whereas the slow cooker, it's great for like tenderizing and, you know, making all the flavors melt, but they can add like a whole nother depth of layer of flavor by searing it first or just putting it on a pan and then heating it on a pretty high heat and just kind of getting the edges brown before you do that. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just say that. And then here's an idea on cooking your own chicken, which you what you do is you cover your chicken with water. So you put the whole chicken in there and you cook it on high for three to four hours. And the cooking time depends on the size and cooked at an internal temperature. So that's how you'll know it's done of that 165. 
and then you know like you know you can you can stop and eat it so the meat should also uh easily slip from the bones and if it's not if it's really clean i made a turkey like that and it was just i was like uh, this is not done you know in cer certain parts so that's why um that can be a good clue also so add flavor to the broth by adding those cut up onions celery carrots other vegetables like and then you put them on the bottom then put the chicken on that and then also like you know the chicken juices will flavor the meats it'll be pretty good so you can um you can um most meats so most meats release liquids during cooking so that's why you don't have to worry about necessarily putting water with everything um in a slow cooker i had to do some research on this so i apologize but the thing uh, about the slow cooker is that you know it'll heat it from all sides so it can dry it out if you don't have a lot of liquid there because you know it cooks partly by steaming so that's why you know usually it can be good just to add a little bit of um some sort of liquid and if you end up cooking fattier cuts like lamb, um, lamb shank uh, pork shoulder chicken wings drumsticks usually you can get away without adding extra water broth because there's enough fat in there that'll keep it moist but like the leaner meats, like chicken breast, they won't turn out well if you dry cook them. And so that would be dry without the liquid. Because that, you know, that liquid creates that steam. It'll make them tender. All right. And then the roast chicken. So I have a friend who does this a lot. She's like, you can cook the whole chicken in the crock pot. You season it with like sage and thyme and garlic and onion powder, smoked paprika. Um, you can put some vegetables below it and you don't need to do the liquid on that because it's not cut up chicken breast. So it'll make its own liquid and it'd be about four to five hours and you want it at 165. So what she does is she just seasons that outside of the chicken. She says she massages it <laughs> um, and then she keeps it. Um, yeah. So then she puts those vegetables under there and does that. And she said it's the most delicious thing. So what she does also is um, if you don't have vegetables on the top or, or on the bottom, you can put a ring of foil at the bottom um, to use kind of as a, yeah, use as a kind of a, a rack to keep the chicken from steaming in its own juices as it cooks. So you would be just setting it, like making a ring of out of aluminum foil and then it'll help set it above. And yeah, so she does it, what she does is she preps it in the morning, um, just, or in the, evening excuse me with the herbs and spices and then she takes it out of the um out in the morning sprays the crock pot and she just puts the chicken in yeah good thing to try so then using maybe that chicken you could make slow cooker chicken tacos too it's a great meal from your pantry and freezer so what you do if you make this in the slow cooker would you take those five ingredients so you take salsa frozen corn black beans cumin chicken breasts so you can take out you know one of them if you don't like you could use canned corn you can use frozen corn and then um, you could use canned beans or ones that you've boiled and you put that all in the slow cooker. And that's another meal idea. Really good. <laughs> so lentils, the cool thing about lentils is you don't have to pre-soak. You know how we suggested pre-soaking the dry beans just so that they would um, release, I guess, get um, rid of some of the oleosaccharides that cause um, digestional gas uh lentils you don't have to pre-soak them you can prep them the night before and just throw it in the morning so if you were to use meat you would need to keep it separate so the lentils can go with the vegetables all prepped together and then you could just plug it in, in the morning lentils are high in fiber great for you and easier to, to digest than other beans so here's kind of an idea on how to do that then there's some casserole and soup ideas there's a uh, vegetable lasagna, jambalaya, breakfast casserole, bean soups, tomato and potato soup, chili, the Super Bowl is coming up, right? Traditional beef or chicken. I have uh, another friend, she makes vegetable lasagna a lot. She takes what's ever available in the garden. So this would be a great um, summer or um, summer uh, dish, excuse me. Okay, so she'd take like zucchini, summer squash, you could use mushrooms. So she sautés this outside of the slow cooker and adds like a jar of tomato sauce and a little bit of water. And then she takes the crock pot and she starts layering that sauce layer that she just made, made with the vegetables. She puts lasagna noodles, you can use whole wheat. Um, and then she does some cheese, she does spinach, and then she puts that sauce mix again. And she doesn't pre-cook the noodles. So if you think about that, that can be a really, you know, just a dish you can throw together then and have it cook for you. And she doesn't, yeah, pre-cook them. And she cooks it about three hours. She finds that four hours 
it's a little bit mushy by then. So that's the thing about pasta. Sometimes you might want to add that towards the end if you have like a soup or something like that, because the other things will cook slower than the pasta will. You can also use eggplant instead of the noodles and um, that will work. And there's some recipes online that are very similar. So there's an eggplant sauce. This only takes about four hours to cook. So if you're going to be gone all day, it's probably not the ideal, but the advantage would be, you know, like you can be ready more quickly. And I have um, some recipes that I'll send you guys after this presentation. And then um, Amanda, if I if she's on here, yes. Do you want to tell them why you picked um, these recipes? Do I, do I like to present them? Let me see if I can. Might have to make her co-host. It will be emailed. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I picked this turkey chili for the Super Bowl coming up. There's also a Super Bowl event coming on March 9th that Andrea is doing. Just better options to have on the Super Bowl. It was really. I looked a lot for healthy recipes and it's hard to find for the Super Bowl. So I would definitely check that out. I chose the turkey chili because it's quick and easy. And there's a lot of preparing if you're hosting the Super Bowl or even if you just have family over, whatever it is. So this takes one onion, five cloves of garlic, 15 ounce of light kidney beans, 15 ounce of dark kidney beans two cans of crushed tomatoes and 16 ounces of 30, 93% lean ground turkey. That's the leanest turkey that you can get. Just like the, the beef that she mentioned, the fat cooks into the meal, but with this, at least you know that it's lean. So you'll be getting that 7%. And the herbs are chili powder, cumin and salt and pepper to taste, which of course is optional. You can or, you know, use the herbs that you like or the spices that you like um, usually on your chili. So you add in the onion, add your spices, both the cans of beans, the tomato cans, uh, add your turkey and break it apart. You cook on high on three hours and then halfway through, break up the turkey all the way because there will still be chunks in there. And when you're finished, you can add your toppings that you like. Do I drain the beans? Do you drain the beans first? Um, I would. I would drain the beans. I, it's kind of the liquid instead of the water. It's being cooked in the crushed tomato, similar to salsa. And this serves 10 people. So a lot of people or have leftovers or freeze it. You're welcome. And then here's one more she had. If I can get it to go ahead. There we go. If you cook or if you choose to eat vegan, vegetarian, or even just plant-based, or you want like a meatless option, if you do meatless Mondays, this is quinoa and vegetables in the slow cooker. We just had quinoa the other day and it's so good. So this calls for three cups of vegetable broth, one carrot, one teaspoon of cilantro, two cloves of garlic, one cup of fresh green beans, one small onion, one and a half cups of organic quinoa, a fourth a teaspoon of black pepper, one medium red pepper chopped, and one tablespoon of olive oil. So you chop up all the vegetables, rinse your quinoa, Dump it into the crock pot, add one tablespoon of olive oil to coat it, stir in the broth, vegetables, pepper, and garlic. Don't add in the cilantro that goes last. You cover and cook on low for four to six hours, or you can cook it on high for two to four hours. You could probably even do the method that Andrea mentioned by doing high on one for the first hour and then turning it down and just take an hour off. The quinoa is done when you can fluff it with a fork and all the liquid is absorbed. And then at the end, you can add your cilantro and serve. 
Thank you a lot, Amanda. Appreciate that. She was looking for quite a while and trying to find the slow cook, like, you know, good recipes for the Super Bowl. So I think she found a couple of good ones. And then I was just going to say, too, one of my other favorite things to do in the crock pot would be the spaghetti squash. So you just have to poke the holes in the squash with a fork or a knife. And you put the slow cooker, put it in the slow cooker with about two cups of water and you cook it on low for about six to eight hours. If you've never had spaghetti squash, it's really fun. It kind of looks like spaghetti, which is why it's called that. And what you do is you would just cut it open and you can just use a fork and it'll bring up strands of it. And you can use it as a spaghetti replacement or just as a vegetable if you like that. It's really good. It's good with um, just tomato sauce on it. And so... Yeah, and there's a recipe that I'll be sending you for that too. And then you might think like dessert ideas. You're like, well, what am I supposed to do for that? So mixed berry compo could be an idea. You can make homemade applesauce in there. Just think about how it could simmer. Lava cakes, there's a recipe for that. Baked apples, and you can see it here, and more. So here's just a recipe for the baked apples. Just so you can kind of see what you do. You take like the apples, the butter, brown sugar, cinnamon, raisins, and cranberries, and then just a half cup of water. So what you would do is you core out the like the stem and the middle part of that uh, apple that you don't want to eat. And then you slit just a little bit, uh, one third of the way down on all four sides. And so it can kind of like, you know, get the juices in and cook. And then you add items in this core. So you just drizzle a little bit of butter. You could put raisins, a little bit of brown sugar or cinnamon. And then you put that water at the bottom of the slow cooker and you place them, place them in there and you cook for about six to eight hours. So other, I've looked at a lot of recipes for this too, just to kind of see what you could do. And some people stuff them with granola and raisins. Some people use orange juice instead of that bra the water on the bottom. So you can kind of find what works the best for you. So. Uh, just another quiz before we're done. The slow cookers can be used for keeping foods warm. Oh, excuse me. It's not a quiz. <laughs> so slow cookers can be used for keeping foods warm, such as mashed potatoes and oatmeal. So I did a potluck once and, you know, trying to do oatmeal for a crowd um, when you're doing other breakfast foods can be really difficult. So oatmeal works great for uh, using a slow cooker just to keep it warm and then mashed potatoes if you're thinking like thanksgiving you know how sometimes you have so many last minute things to do just if you make your mashed potatoes a little ahead you can put it in the slow cooker so that's a real advantage it's just it kind of be kind of can be like a holding chamber to keep things warm so you don't have to have it on the stove and you know it's less likely to burn so handle leftovers safely so this is important to just transfer the leftovers to a shallow container with food about two inches deep and that is because you want it to cool down quickly to get out of that danger zone. Remember how we talked about the danger zone was 40 to uh, 140. So like as it's cooling down, you know, if it's pretty, um, if you leave it in the slow cooker, for instance, say you have leftover chili and you just set that whole container in the fridge, you know, it's gonna take a long time because it's so deep for it to get to the middle to um, make the bacteria, you know, like get to a safe temperature. So. If you do it um, really thin in a pan, then you can be better be able to um, cool it down faster. Here's kind of an example then that. So just, um, yeah, from the time they're removed from the heat of the slow cooker. So you either want it, you know, like warm um, above that 140 degrees, or you want to try to get it down below 40 as fast as you can. And that's why you put it in a, a like a, a container where it can dry and cool faster. <laughs> so you don't want to reheat leftovers in your slow cooker as they might not heat fast enough to be safe. So if you think about it, they've already, you know, um, taken time to get to the temperature again, and you don't want them to have to like take that time to get to the temperature one more time. So, you know, just reheat the things on the stovetop if you want to reheat, and then you can put them in the slow cooker to keep them warm. So the food already went through that, um, you know, heating up slowly phase. The combination of the direct heat from the pot, lengthy cooking and steam, it destroys the bacteria, making it a safe process for cooking foods. You just don't want to reheat in that. It's not recommended because foods, just like what I said, stay in the danger zone too long between 40 and 140, and the bacteria multiply rapidly at these temperatures. So that's why, you know, you keep your fridge low 40 degrees, well below, and then you just want, when you're heating things up, you want to get it above 140. So just to get an idea, water boils at 212 degrees and it simmers at 190. So you can, you know, if you're even just below simmering, you're still safe. And then if you have, um, 
like 85 to 105, the water is comparable then to the temperature of the human body. And then warm water, kind of like when you're washing your hands, it's about 115 to 120. So you can see how, it, you know, just a little bit over that would be good. And then reheating leftovers, like what we said on the stove or in the microwave or in the oven until it reaches 165. So leftovers is always 165. It's um, especially when they're mixed dishes because you just want to make sure to kill the bacteria. And you can um, hold them then the lower warm setting to keep them hot during serving. So say you know your family is coming soon, but apparently they're delayed at the gas station or whatever, then you can put them in the crock pot and they'll just be warm when everybody comes. So just a quick review, which statement is true? This is the quiz now. Slow cookers work well for reheating leftovers. <laughs> Store leftovers in a slow cooker and then just insert it in the refrigerator and reheat leftovers in the microwave or on a stove to 165, then transfer to a slow cooker on a low setting. Which one do you think is true? You guys are, <laughs> you guys are very good. Okay, thank you. So let's see, moving on. And then converting recipes for your slow cooker. This is just something else that can be handy. Say you usually make something on a stove and you're like, can I make that in the slow cooker? Like, how would that work? And using a recipe, it's great if you can use it um, with ingredients or amounts that are similar to an existing slow cooker recipe. And just a couple tips with that. Liquids often can be reduced by one third to one half, um, you know, like in your recipe because they don't boil away in a slow cooker. You know, if you leave that lid on, all the water is stayed in. Whereas like sometimes when you're cooking on the stove, the water is evaporating. So you might not need as much water as it said for your stove recipe. So that's just something to remember. And also using too much alcohol is a problem because again, you know, on the stove, it'll cook off, but here we're all condensing and keeping in there. So just thinking about maybe using broth or instead of the alcohol or reducing alcohol if you cook with wine or something like that. So it's all gonna stay in there and not evaporate out. So when converting soup recipes, reducing the liquids doesn't matter because we don't care if it can, you know, evaporates or not, it's probably, um, you want a lot of the liquid. And then adding pasta, this is what I was talking about at the end of the cooking process or cooking it separately and adding just before serving, um, that can help it prevent it from getting mushy. So like orzo or elbow, um, and then also same with the fish or like shrimp. If you add those in there, they just cook the last 20 or 30 minutes because they're, you know, they take way less time than this other thing. And it's not, you know, appealing. I guess you don't want really, really hard like <laughs> shrimp or um, fish that's way overcooked. So that's why you add them at the end. I worked at a soup pa pantry and we would always have crockpot meals just sitting out as part of the lineup of food that we were giving. And she, like the chef there, she always cooked the pasta separately. And what she would do then is when, um, when it was ready, she'd have a big pot on the stove and then the pasta in a separate pot. And then what we would do is we'd take some of the big stove pot and then some of the cooked noodles and just put them together in, a, in the slow cooker as a holding thing. But she would never just, you know, like add the noodles in that big pot because, you know, they would get really overdone. So it'd still be edible, but it just might not have that pleasing um, mouthfeel. And then avoid curdling by adding milk, cheese, and cream one hour before serving. So if those start to boil, then they can curdle and then the proteins will separate. So you'd kind of be able to tell that in there. The exception sometimes is cheese, like certain dips and things like that. They work with the cheese added earlier. So here's a time chart for adapting recipes. So if your recipe says, you know, 15 to 30 minutes to make this, you could cook it on low for four to six hours, or you could cook it on high for one and a half to two hours. So this can help you with like your lasagna recipe, you know, because it's like, you know, cook in the oven for, you know, 45 minutes. So if it's 45 minutes, maybe you could cook that lasagna in that pot for six to 10 hours or for three to four hours if you want it on high. And you can also buy a programmable crock pot so that, you know, it will start um, when you need it and then it'll shut off and it could go to the low settings automatically so that it'll stay warm. Sometimes people like the programmable crockpots sometimes can be more expensive, but you could also um, buy a program, uh, like a timer, like kind of like the ones you use with Christmas lights and that might be the less expensive option. So you can set it like an exact cook time and then when it switches to warm when the cooking time is up so that, you know, if you do have something in there that you just don't want to keep cooking and keep cooking, then you can just switch it to warm and it'll hold it instead of roasting it. Okay. And then no matter what anyone says, um, 
is uh, my cooking is excellent even when the smoke alarm seems to be cheering me on. So just like an encouragement, I guess, just to keep trying stuff. Um, and yeah, it's really fun to use a crock pot. So serving up a few final thoughts on home cooking. Cooking is not about being the best or the most perfect cook, but rather it is about sharing the table with family and friends. And the kitchen really is the castle itself. This is where we spend our happiest moments and where we find the joy of being a family. And some of the most important conversations I've ever had occurred at my family's dinner table. So that's all I have, just so I just, uh, please complete the short evaluation that I'll send you following this webinar. I really appreciate your feedback. Um, let me just quick look and see if there's any questions here. Um, look up. Thank you guys. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. <laughs> Smoke alarm, definitely. Mine goes off every time I turn on something on the stove, so that is something I need to work on fixing, but I think it's very heat sensitive. <laughs> um, I mean, if I could use it. Yes, plain sake. And then I will, I don't know that offhand, but I will look that up and get that to you information when I send out the survey. So flank steak cooking. Anything else? Can I ask for those of you who are still on, what are your favorite things to put um, in the crock pot? I'd love to hear what you guys say. Okay, so why is there a need to soak kidney beans? So you soak them and actually boil them because there's a natural toxic it, toxin. I don't want you to get scared about eating them, but okay, so there's a natural toxin in kidney beans, but it's killed when they're cooked. So it's like you don't want to have slightly raw kidney beans, so that would be why it's really important. Um, so a whole cooking chicken pot pot. I've never tried lasagna. I really have to do that. Pulled pork. <laughs> yes, these two. Thank you guys so much. I really, I'll get uh, the question answered and I'll, we'll send you recipes with the survey. I hope you guys have a good day and thank you.